Hi everyone, and welcome to Exploring the Build. If you've just found this place, then welcome. And if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. I'm Alex, and this is my channel where we explore and theorycraft different character builds for Dungeons & Dragons 5e. Today, we are continuing our quick build series. We'll be going over a briefly summarized character build for Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition. And as always with quick builds, if there's ever a specific build you'd like to see me explore in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below. The concept for this week's video comes from Matt McCasland 1400 who asked for a matador build. Now, admittedly, my knowledge of matadors or bullfighters is really only basic level. I don't know a lot of the history behind the matador tradition, and so this quick build is really just going to be built around the thematic idea of what a matador is. Someone who is meant to dress up, be very performance focused, and put on a little bit of showmanship as they try to attempt to take on and fight a rampaging threat. We're not going to be specializing to actually fighting bulls or beasts in the build, of course, but we are going to specialize into being a character that is trying to taunt the threat that is facing the party, goad it into attacking us, and have the dexterity skills or features to be able to actually get out of danger when that threat comes rushing towards us. We're probably going to want a little bit of animal handling because even though we might not always be going up against a beast, just given the amount of mundane and magical beasts in a D&D world, it's probably reasonable to say that our matador character at least started out by going up against animals. It would make sense that we have some level of animal handling. And the final thing we're going to want is a taunt feature of some kind, because really that is what a matador is meant to do, taunt the bull into charging them and then being able to dodge out of the way. Without that taunt feature, we're really not much of a matador. We would just be some sort of performer, but that doesn't mean that the enemy would actually have to attack us. We're going to want something to make the enemy that we're facing focus on us, want to attack us, and then we're going to want those dexterous abilities to be able to get out of the way. Starting the build and character creation, we want this character's lineage to be able to be anything. If you want a free feat at level 1, then going something like Human Variant or Custom Lineage could definitely work, but if you'd rather just be any other lineage, that should be perfectly viable. For our stats, again because we could be any lineage, that means our stats should probably be a little bit variable. But the definite idea is that we want Dexterity and Charisma to be our two highest stats. After that, you can prioritize any other ones that you want, but Dexterity and Charisma should be the top two for us. Starting in the actual level breakdown of the build now, for this video I'm actually not doing a level breakdown. I'm going to talk about what we want our main class to be, but then for our multi-class there are kind of two good options, and I'd like to touch on both of those. Of course there might be more good options than just one or two, and if you think of any other multi-classes or primary classes even that could work for this type of build, feel free to take those instead. For our main class specifically, we want to be a rogue. We want to go nine levels up into rogue and take Swashbuckler as our subclass. The reason for this is because Swashbuckler is both dexterity and charisma focused. Rogue is very dex based and the Swashbuckler gives a lot of features that synergize with charisma, both of which are what we want. Because we're also going up nine levels into rogue, we're going to gain four levels of expertise at least, and those expertise skills are going to put the skills that we want to be good at right over the top. We're going to want persuasion, performance, animal handling, and then you can pick one extra that happens to be your favorite skill. Persuasion is just going to be mechanically beneficial for us, and I'll get to that in a sec. But performance and animal handling are both very thematic for our matador. The main reason we want to go swashbuckler rogue, though, comes at level 9. That main feature is panache. Panache says that as an action, we can make a Charisma Persuasion check, which is why we took Expertise in Persuasion, and that gets contested by another creature's Insight check. That creature must be able to hear us, and the two of us must share a language. If we succeed on the check, and the creature is hostile towards us, which most of the time they will be since we want to use this in combat, that creature then has disadvantage on attack rolls against targets other than us, and they can't even make opportunity attacks against targets other than us as well. This effect is going to last for one minute, or until one of our companions attacks the target, affects it with a spell, or until us or the target are more than 60 feet apart. Panache is the main taunt ability, and it's a really good one at that. It's kind of odd that it comes from Rogue, because we have things like Uncanny Dodge from level 5 and Evasion from level 7, 
those are both really good ways to back up this panache ability to be able to literally dodge out of danger should the enemy decide to attack or throw a spell or other feature at us that would cause us harm. Panache is also amazing because there's no limit on how many times we can use it. It does say that the effect lasts for a minute or until something triggers that causes it to end early, but there's no limit on the amount of times we can still just reuse it over and over and over again. And we have a very, very reliable feature to be able to taunt enemies and goad them into attacking us. And it feels very thematically appropriate given that we're making a charisma check contested by another creature's insight check. Just know that that is our main restriction. The number of languages we have to be able to share languages with enemies when we go up against them, and the fact that they have to be able to hear us. If they can't hear us and they don't share a language, we can't use panache, and this is our main go-to ability. Now it's time to talk about the two multi-class options that we have. Both these options aren't going to really come online till level 12 since we want to get panache as quick as possible. Though technically you could mix it up and try to get these multi-class options out of the way first, or at least get to level three so we can pick them up and then go get panache. But I'll leave that level breakdown to you. Option one is to go Beastmaster Ranger. This would actually make us a matador and bull combo, since we could get a legitimate bull animal companion with the Beast of the Land optional feature from Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. The Beast of the Land is a animal companion that can scale relatively nicely with our Beastmaster Ranger levels. We can flavor it to be an actual bull, which is just kind of fun to think about. And they have an actual charge ability, meaning they would feel like a bull in combat, being able to charge enemies, deal a little bit extra damage, and possibly knock them prone. If you do want to go this route, some good bonuses you would get is the fact that the bull, or beast of the land companion that we have, can technically attack with a bonus action. You can either sacrifice your own attacks, or command it to do an action as a bonus action, which is what we would want to do because we want to follow up the bull's attack with our own panache action. The reason for this is because if we have our bull companion make an attack against the enemy and then use panache afterwards, that doesn't cancel the panache ability immediately, meaning our allies that are after us in the turn order will still gain the benefits of the panache taunt, hopefully. And because the bull is an ally of ours, technically, if we succeed on the panache, the bull can then move away from that enemy without taking an opportunity attack, and that would allow them to use the charge again on their next turn. It's just a reliable way to get a little bit more damage out of our animal companion, and it also feels like a inverse of a matador almost. Instead of us dodging the bull, we're now working with the bull to defeat any other actual threats on the battlefield. The other bonus that Ranger gives us are actually the basic favored enemy features. Favored enemy gives us an extra language known whenever we pick a new favored enemy type. So if you were to pick dragons as your favorite enemy, you learn draconic. If you pick giants as your favorite enemy, you learn giant. This is awesome because as soon as we learn those creatures extra languages, that means that we can now panache those creatures or something we didn't already know their languages. That's just an awesome extra way to get lots of mileage out of our panache feature and make sure that we can taunt any creature that we go up against in combat. This is definitely the more animal focused way to go and it can really feel like an interesting inversion of what the matador thematically is. Option two is more charisma focused and is kind of thematically more about us just being the matador on their own. We're very performance and showmanship oriented and wants to just goad every single enemy into focusing on us while our party actually does the work in getting rid of them off the battlefield. For this option, I'd probably recommend actually picking the three levels up a little bit earlier and then getting panache later, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And this path would be Eloquence Bard. See, Eloquence Bard is really nice because of the silver tongued feature they get right away at level three. Silver tongued is just a mini reliable talent ability that is specific to persuasion and deception. Anytime we roll a nine or lower, when we're making one of those skill checks, we actually rolled a 10. And that's why it would pair so well with panache. Now, admittedly, you could just go up to a level 11 rogue and get the actual reliable talent, which is obviously better, but this also gives us bardic inspiration. So not only would our panache ability just become super reliable because we have the silver tongued feature, 
but we also gain bardic inspiration, which then helps our bonus action economy. We could now panache as an action to taunt the enemy into trying to attack us, and then deal out a bardic inspiration die to our allies, so that once the ally actually is going to attempt to attack that enemy, then they'll have that bardic inspiration to add to the attack to make sure that they don't miss. Or they could use it however else that they wanted to, whether that's defensively, on a skill, anything like that. Added on to the value of just bardic inspiration and panache as well is the fact that Eloquence Bard also gains Unfailing Inspiration. Unfailing Inspiration is a really awesome feature for bards because it says that when a creature adds one of our bardic inspiration dice to its ability check, saving throw, or attack roll, and that roll does not succeed, the creature can just keep the bardic inspiration die. It just gets us that much more value out of bardic inspiration itself. Finally, one extra nice reason to go bard is because at level 10, when we get magical secrets, if you went that high into bard, we could gain powerful animal-based spells, such as conjure animals, summon beasts, speak with animals, etc. And that would really help fulfill that extra little animal component of the matador theme. We wouldn't have an actual animal companion, but we could have some temporary ones, or at least make it feel like we're skilled with animals in general. All right, time to summarize the build. Overall, depending on which route you take, we are a very thematic matador, whether that's the inverse with the matador and bull combo, or the straight up performance based matador meant to taunt every single enemy into attacking us while our party takes them out. Either way, we have a good base class with the Swashbuckler Rogue. We're not really focused on the damage aspects of Swashbuckler so much as the taunt ability from Panache. It's just such a nice unrestricted ability that is surprisingly good as far as taunt abilities in D&D go that it's really nice to be able to make use of it and it is thematically very appropriate for us. We aren't going to be the best tank since we don't have a lot of health to back up that taunt feature. If you went ranger, you'd get a little bit more health, and that'd be nice. But uncanny dodge and evasion should hopefully be enough to be able to give us a little bit more durability for when that enemy does inevitably come and attack us. Because let's be honest, at this point, our character is all just about pissing it off and trying to get its attention. I personally found this build kind of interesting because it's not really damage focused or necessarily support focused. Very much about taunting, but not necessarily tanking and supporting their allies because we're just taking an enemy's attention and putting it onto us. We're not necessarily trying to protect our allies by taking that enemy's attention. We're just sort of trying to be a distraction and of course be very performative in that distraction as well. We also have the agility and dexterity to be able to back up our taunting. We have so many features, as I've said, like uncanny dodge and evasion, but also just like the cunning action ability to dash. We could, without trying to leave 60 feet so panache doesn't fail, just use our action to panache an enemy and then run circles around them with both our bonus action and our action, trying to get as far away from them as possible. Overall, I think we're a pretty good recreation of what a thematic matador is, at least in D&D 5e. Let me know what you thought of the build or what you would change or maybe add to try and get closer to the theme of the matador. And maybe there are more options that I've overlooked that would be good to throw in as well. Thank you so much for joining me on the journey, and I hope to see you in the next one.